I'm Rihanna Scipio. And I'm Gershon Brown. We're two good friends who between us have broken down big barriers as black people born and raised in Britain. We talk every day about everyday things. Loving, loneliness, parenting, making money, staying healthy, climate change and COVID-19. And why in 2021 we're still waiting for an invitation to the table when it comes to two black people talking topical on mainstream TV. That's why we decided to stop waiting, create the vision and invite you to join us. Hi, and a big welcome to Gush. And Ree. You have a good weekend? Yeah, a bit tired because I'm so excited about being here today. Yes, me too. Because we've got a packed show for you today and an extra special guest, Linville Golding from British pop band The Specials joins us all the way from his home in Seattle. He'll be telling us that he thinks The Specials political message is just as relevant today as it was 40 years ago when the band first got together. Incredible, it's 40 years. That's Linville Golding later in the show. And we'll be meeting with Phil the Chef to learn how to make a quick and easy dish that's colourful, nutritious and one for the whole family. We'll love Love, love. <laughs> a real feast for the eyes as well as the palate coming up at 12.15. That's roasted veggies and marinated chicken. Now, Gersh and I start every single day sitting side by side like sardines in our makeup chairs while we go over scripts for the show and I do my makeup. Now, I don't have a makeup artist. I do prefer to do my own. And even though I have exactly the same drill every day, nothing ever changes. I did wonder if Gersh ever notices what is in my makeup kit and what I use it for. So I decided to get a little mischievous and put Gersh to the test in our very own Men In Your Life makeup challenge to see if he is paying attention. I might be scarred for life after that experience, Gersh. You'll see how he gets on at 12.30 in the show. Yes, thank God for makeup wipes, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Men In Your Life makeup challenge coming up at 12.30. Also on the show today, we've asked 100 men how much they're paying attention to the women in their lives. The results were surprising. Mm, they are very surprising. That's the Gersh and Re poll coming up later in the show. Now, some of you might remember me as a presenter on some of the UK's most popular television programmes. Yep, that's me there. I spent a fair amount of time swanning up and down red carpets and uh, posing for the cameras. Mm. But underneath the headlines, I was suffering from a crippling disease that an estimated 50% of women in Britain from all walks of life are suffering from in mm. silence, and that is mm. alcoholism. Yeah. Now, I'm proud to say that I am seven years sober. Congratulations, Lee. So Thank proud you. Of you. And I'm passionate about removing the stigma of alcoholism and women in Britain and putting the spotlight on a deadly disease that is killing our mothers, daughters, sisters and wives in plain sight. Lydia's in her mid-40s, lives by herself in London and is estranged from her adult child because in her own words, she's often chosen drink over her daughter. Now Lydia says she is finally ready to change a 20-year drinking problem that's cost her absolutely everything. Let's hear Lydia's story. My name is Lydia Green and I have a problem with alcohol. When I first started drinking, it was more like I was more relaxed and I was a more better person to be around, so to say, or more fun to be around. <clears throat> Normally I come across as quite serious and in the beginning like the alcohol made me feel a lot more relaxed and a lot more fun. Lydia is very shy and very quiet. And even if I go out to a party, for example, I would have a drink to get me into a vibe or to get into that party mood. Otherwise, I would pretty much be quite boring. And at what stage would you say it moved from being fun to being a problem? Mm, about maybe, could be about 12 years or more, probably, yeah. I think I realised that I became a lot more dependent on alcohol. Not sure why as such, probably yes, because of my abuse in the past, but it was more like sit down, relax, put my daughter to bed, a bit of me time, and... Um, a bit of companionship? A bit of companionship, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at the time I was with um, an abusive partner and that would help me either relax and not, you know, 
then to go to bed. So it was kind of safer that way. I'd be on auto mode, get up in the morning and go to the shop to get a drink when I was at my worst of drinking. Um, even if I didn't want to, it was just a habit. What other ways has alcohol shown up in your life as a problem? Um, my daughter hates me drinking and it's caused a divide in our relationship. I think that's the biggest regret. Most of the time she doesn't see me drinking, she just sees me, I probably was drunk and then I've gone to sleep and she thinks that I've passed out and I could be dead. And she fears that one day I'd come home and I'm not alive. And she's given me alternatums or alter whatever you want to call it to say me or the drink. And I've chose the drink sometimes over her. And she's a, a only child and it's me, her and her mummy, not her and mummy and drink and she sees the drink as the demon, so to say, between us, and she just hates it. Up to this day, she hates it. How has drinking affected you and work? The reason why I can't hold a job down, I reckon, is because of drink. Mm. So really, your relationship with alcohol or your problem with alcohol has cost you a lot? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Your work, my your work, relationship my, with your daughter? Yeah, family. I've always had a vision that I would be a high achiever, I would be financially stable, um, go on holidays, you know, enjoy adult life with my daughter, watch her grow into and evolve into a woman, which I've held on to. And I think without having that, I don't know what would have, that I hold on to that very, very, very tightly, so to say. Um, and I've always been into education. I've always been told you're so brainy, you're so intelligent. You know, I could have done many of university courses and masters, um, which I still am up to this day. I'm trying to still get my degree in something that interests me. And I still have that fight to get to where I see myself, the level that I have put myself in to get there. Why have you chosen now to come out on camera, which it takes a lot of courage to do. Um, I'm tired of living that way. I'm tired of myself. I'm tired of the cycle of, here we go again. And I really believe that I deserve a breakthrough. I've never learned how to love myself or appreciate myself in a way that I, I taught my daughter to love herself. I, I, embrace, I made her appreciate herself in any shape or form that she is because I never I never had that and like I've been through enough to say it's about time I'm to shine let's go to the mecca of recovery that is beautiful California to hear from Gina Tabrizi a licensed marriage and family therapist specializing in areas of addiction trauma and codependency She's also the founder of Harmony Heals Treatment Centre in California. Well, yes. it's fantastic to have you on the show. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. What's the roadmap for Lydia to stop drinking? She has the desire. Is desire enough? Right. Her story is so compelling because her desire has not been enough. You have to not only surrender to the idea I can never take a drink again. I can't because I am chemically wired to not stop. So if I remove the chemical, I can have sobriety. I can have wellness. I can heal. But if I don't remove the chemical, I can't. But I can't do it by myself right. because everything that I've tried has got me here by myself. I got here. Here we have a drinking culture. I think we might have even invented pubs. Mm. It's kind of a you know, keep calm and carry on culture over here. So it's very different from California where I got sober, which is the mecca of recovery. Absolutely. So we so can't really compare, that. but just for sort of some reference, are there any figures on the amount of women who drink in the United well, States? Well, we're seeing a rise in these last many years of women coming to treatment. We, we don't even know the number because they've been afraid to come forward, but it's about right. a 30, a 35% increase over the last year. And we're seeing about 70% of women, I'd say, coming in to get help for alcoholism, but it's unreported. That's the problem. There's right. so many- It's difficult to know. And of course, 
a lot of people that come to treatment don't want to be recorded. Mm. They don't want other people to know. No. And that's their right no. as well. Well, they're scared. So, uh, there's so many fears for women because they're, you know, we're social creatures and, and it's such a barrier for us to get help because they're afraid they're gonna lose their relationships, their marriages, their children, that risk for their children being taken away. If they're single mothers, there's no one to turn to. And they're like, how can I leave my child? My child's better off with me drinking than in the system. So there is so many barriers for a woman to finally say, this is not working, I'm not functioning. I'm actually in pain, I'm actually suffering and I'm actually drowning in the drink. Well, I can relate to that completely, particularly as somebody in the public eye, Gina. Yeah. The shame, the secret shame that I carried because people so fell in love with my public image and they didn't know the reality of my life, which was to go back home and and drink myself into a cocked hat, as we say over here, uh, every evening. And so that was difficult in itself. So I completely relate to what you're saying about women not wanting to come forward for lots of different reasons, but you're saying that we're coming forward far more now than the days of Betty Ford. So that's a rise, I like that message. And I take it that the numbers have been significantly impacted due to COVID, people isolating, not having that voice that they can reach out to, someone to, to help them through the dark times of their alcoholism. Yeah, well, COVID has put a blanket around the alcoholic and said, settle down and dig in because I'm here for you. So while they're isolated and they're afraid and they're lonely and they're depressed and they're having other issues, I mean, a huge issue um, that I haven't mentioned yet is women with hormonal changes. We actually have physiological changes that are very different than men. And these things activate the desire to drink. And it's something that's worth mentioning. Do you mean menopause? You mean of a certain age? Perimenopause, even having um, premenstrual syndrome, if they have difficult menstrual cycles. So when women are disordered in their own physical body with hormones, it sends signals to the brain to get relief and alcohol comes in that form of relief. Can you give us some insight because I'm someone that doesn't drink often uh, other than maybe once a year, a little tipple at Christmas. And um, I want to be more sympathetic to people that have this problem. So can you help me? Imagine there is no face for addiction. It's every face. It's every person because it is an illness. I didn't ask to get cancer. I didn't ask to get depression. And yet when I think of those illnesses, they take over me. They like a darkness that comes over me that causes me to feel a certain way that I don't want to feel. It's hurting. It's depleting. It's damaging. Yes, I suited up. I showed up. I went to work. I took care of my kids. But inside, I felt lost, I felt scared, I felt alone, and I was hurting. So every time I sit in front of the addict and the alcoholic, I said, I know your pain. I know the pain of carrying the burden of an illness that I don't want. You know, that is a fantastic analogy, Gina. And maybe that helps you to frame it a bit better as a non-drinker. I I I actually feel quite emotional because you're actually connecting something in me that... I, I, I now uh, I'm looking at uh, issues that I've had in the past where I've seen someone that I know and that's dear to me that's been suffering with the problem. And uh, I, I, I was numb to it. I, I always felt that they were in control on some level, but um, just the way you've explained it to me. That it was willpower yeah. or a no. moral deficit no. or lack it of discipline. Not. It's none of those, right? No. It's none of those. And no. also the thing I want to point out is that And what's really important for me to drive home is that alcoholic women don't look like a a certain way. We are everywhere. It's not about being on a park bench with a with a brown paper bag or in on skid row. Yeah. No. Women who are having trouble with alcohol or alcoholic are in government. We're in higher positions where the the women that you see going to work suited and booted. Well, you're the mothers who are driving the kids to school. and picking them up to school. So here is where the conversation starts. If you want to lift the burden of shame and 
make a serious change in your life or if you know somebody who needs a little encouragement or support we're going to have a list of resources available in the uk at the end of the show and on the website as well gina thank you so much enjoy your the rest of your day we're in different time zones (laughs) but enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you again soon thank you take care care. bye thank you And I'm happy to tell you that since our interview, Lydia has joined our very special Facebook group for women suffering from alcohol addiction. Compliments to the show. It is jam-packed with information and specialist expert advice, in particular from our very own Gina Tabrizi. And we will be getting an update on Lydia's progress in just a few weeks from now. After the break, we'll be sitting down with Linville Golding, founding member of one of Britain's best loved bands, The Specials. Phil the Chef will be serving up a nutritious feast for the palate as well as for the eyes. And I'll be putting Gersh to the Men in Your Life makeup challenge to find out how much attention the men in our lives are paying to the women in theirs. All of that when we come back after the break. See you after the break. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now, if you found yourself suddenly stuck at home during lockdown, you're probably pulling your hair out. And certainly by now, you're thinking about, what can I cook? I know I can't wait for the restaurants to open up again for every reason. No, me neither. Well, this dish is super easy to make, even if you don't have any skills in the kitchen. And even though it's packed with veggies, the kids are guaranteed to love it. So what you got for us today, Phil? I've got a vegan roast vegetable dish to do for you today. Mm. But we're doing it with a twist because we're not leaving out the meat people. So we've got... So you remembered me. I did. (laughs) (laughs) Nice, nice. This is a Phil de Chef's everyday seasoning. This takes out the hard... Can I Your special sauce? Yes, this is it. This is it. And... uh, Oh. Yes. Smell Ooh, that. Oh, smells yeah. lovely. Yeah, this, That's gorgeous. Uh, this takes out all the hard work, you know, when you're worried about uh, peeling the onions, peeling everything. No, it's one spoon or two spoons when you come in in the, in the evening. And you Suit can me. Add yeah. it to any dish, okay? What's what, in it, Phil? Oh, well, what we have in here, we've got the fresh thyme, the mm-hmm. fresh coriander, we've got some parsley in there, we've got Ooh. some celery in wow. there. Okay, we've got the scallion, we've got onions, the sweet onions you can so use. So the scallion would be spring yeah, onions. Yeah, spring onions, yes. <laughs> okay. Right, okay. And then we've got a bit of chilli, of if you don't want chilli, don't put no chilli in it because... Uh, it's oh, a I thing. like a bit of chilli. Yeah. yeah, but it's a thing that you can put on any fish or meat. Uh, well, a question, Phil. Um, uh, I noticed these are red Scotch bonnets. Yes. Um, I usually see green and yellow. Green and yellow is for the market and it's to make your dish looks good. So you, you made your sauce... Phil's yes. special sauce. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to show you how to use that uh, later on in the dish. But we're going to get everything together now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we'll put some zucchini. Zucchini. Or, 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 or courgettes over here. Courgettes, <laughs> so, yeah. Right, okay. That's this. That's yes, it. That's, that's it. Okay, mm-hmm. then uh, uh, we've, uh, we've got the broccoli, broccoli here, some broccoli. Right, okay. I love the broccoli stems, so please don't, do the, don't leave them out. Okay, yeah. then we're going to use some carrots here. Okay. Right. Use the carrots to what you like, the carrots that you like, okay? And remember that when we do put this dish together, remember that uh, some things cook faster than some. Right, so, 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 on for the vegetables now, yeah? We're just going to, you don't want to use to, because remember we're going healthy today, people! Okay, so we'll just drizzle it with some oil there, right? And then with your balsamic vinegar, right? A drizzle of that. Just a drizzle. There. Just a drizzle. Okay, right, there we are, we're ready. We've put our herbs and spices. Oh, we're gonna need a little bit of thyme. Oh, thyme is just a lovely herb, right? Let's mm. sprinkle it. Oh, you can put it on rough because you're gonna take lovely. it off afterwards. Okay, and your coriander, we're gonna wait and put that later on. Yeah, squeeze it in your fingers when you go to pick it. It is lovely. Herbs. And that will go in the oven just like that, people. Right, quick and simple. Okay, now to prepare this chicken, you do want it to stay succulent. You don't want it to be overcooked. You, as you know, that chicken breast is a very dry thing. So yeah. People, all you have to do here, right, is um, these have been washed, okay? We okay. have washed them. Lemon, where are you? There's your lemon, <laughs> So you know that was the other half. Right, right, right. So we did, and we've washed them, okay? 
And, and so, how many uh, people typically will this serve? This, this will serve four. Four. Yeah. Well, if it's uh, him, it'll serve yeah, one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know who you're cooking <laughs> for, right? So, so. What you really want to know is how yeah. much have we got I'm after made, the show, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, I see my meal there, but where's Rihanna's? Right, right, right. Well, so, I'm a veggie you, girl anyway, as you know. So. Never mind, you use your discretion or you can put in as much as you like. Now, I'm just scoring it. Now, this is our special season. Remember our uh, celery salt? Okay. Right. Okay. We're going to, because, you know... You, I've you, never heard of celery can salt. Can I smell right. that? Yeah, it's mm. lovely. Never heard of it. Absolutely lovely. Ooh. It is lovely. Oh, wow. Okay. You can actually smell the celery. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Right, okay. Oh. Okay. It can I taste it? I don't, I don't want to give it back now. Yeah, just dip your finger in it and taste it and all, you know, and then taste it. That's it. That is lovely. Yeah, it is lovely. I know what I'm having on my chips tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, that is lovely. You that is can really nice. Put it on your sweet potato chips and yeah, use it as a garnish for a lot of things. I'm oh, swiftly yeah. going on with our chicken breast, okay? Now, uh, this herb here that we keep on slipping up on is the rosemary. A little bit of uh, olive oil over it, okay? Oh, look. Yes, look and we do oh. like our, our balsamic vinegar, okay? Oh. And that is it. That is very seasoned. Oh, uh, oh. I'm having food wow. overload. <laughs> smell this, smell it. No, no, oh. he, he, he said <laughs> I should smell my dinner. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, this looks, oh. smells good. Ooh. This is so hearty and Ooh, warm. And that's vegan, that. vegan cheese. And yeah, this is the vegan wow. cheese here. Ooh. Okay, wow. right. and we'll just garnish it like that. Ooh. My mouth Ooh, is watering. <laughs> so you put a bit of cheese on the yeah, top we'll, of it. We'll, we'll, we'll put a bit of uh, olive oil on it. Just to, Looks you know, delicious. right? Remember, it's healthy Yum. olive oil we've got here, right? Just a bit of olive oil. Wow. So you put it on afterwards and yeah. you can cook yeah, it as well. Yeah, and you can cook it, right. okay. And then uh, a bit of garnish on the chicken as well, okay, with a bit of olive oil. It looks delicious. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I can't um, wait to so dig in. Shall we plate it up? Yes, please. Yeah, so well, we'll yes, up. please. Well, okay. I don't think you need to ask me twice. <laughs> you know when you get a, well, well, a, a mouthful of food that you actually can't even talk anymore? <laughs> I don't want to talk. I, I can't, yeah. I, I mean, just like, want to eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In peace. <laughs> I'm not here, I'm not in the show. I'm in my time, in my food time. I'm on another planet, Phil. <laughs> so you could add some more vegetables of your taste and you know what mm. you do like. Mm. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, enjoy. I can honestly say that's the best chicken and veg I've ever tasted, Ree. Uh, it was pretty yummy, wasn't it? Yeah. For delicious. a simple dish, One colourful, oh, mm. just lovely. After the break, we'll be sitting down with Linville Golding, founding member of one of Britain's best love bands, The Specials. And I'll be putting Gersh to the Men In Your Life Makeup Challenge to find out how much attention the men in our lives are paying to the women in theirs. All of that when we come back after the break. See you after the break. Iconic British pop band The Specials celebrated their 40th anniversary in 2019 and my mate Linville Golding is joining us via satellite all the way from his home in Seattle. First, let's take a brief look at the special magic that's kept us rocking through the years. Why do we have to fight? Okay, we're yeah. so glad to see you, Linville. Hi, how is it Good over there you. in Seattle? How's the weather? It's, as a matter of fact, it's, um, it's quite sunny now for me. It's Seattle, isn't it, the weather? <laughs> It, it is. It's very, very similar to London, yeah. You know, it's, wow. it, it, usually when, when, when it's um when it's when it gets cold over there, it gets cold over here as well. Very right. similar. Mm. Well, I want to ask you a little bit about politics, American politics, mm. and in particular the Black Lives Matter T-shirt, which I love. That T-shirt, Limbo. Yeah. Thank you. For yes. that. <laughs> yeah. And that, that jacket is so fly. Mm. Really. Oh, nice. thank you very much. He wants you, it. I told you, him you were super yeah, fly, Limbo. Yeah. What size oh, are you, Linville? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Linville, it, in 2019, mm. the specials, mm -hmm. which is your baby, celebrated yes. 40 years. So let's ju Can jump you? straight in. How have you seen, because you've always had 
a political commentary to your music. How have you mm -hmm. seen things change? Have they changed for the better or for the worse in the 40 years of the special? It's, it's, it's been a journey. It's been an amazing journey. And when I look back and see what we've, we've gone through, even like, even like performing, when I said to, to people, you know why Neville and me had to jump around so much? Because like, especially when we got to Leeds on the, on the Clash tour, we did the Clash tour, one, God bless Joe Strummer because he gave us a break. And the Unparole tour, and in Leeds, there's also a thing they throw at Neville and me, right? So we have to dodge and move around and move around. So we come up with these ways of, ways of, of, of moving and it becomes our, our dancing routine. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, people were throwing things at you. Oh, of course, right. Oh, yes, there was also, you know, us two, us two being in, in, a, in a multiracial band, right? Just yeah. Neville as two blacks, right? It wasn't, it was a time of the National Front. It was pretty hard from the Neville and me. We went through hell. That is remarkable. That, so that's where easy. you get the moves from because- That's where the moves come from. So thank you people who throw things at us. You teach us how to dance. You're a choreographer, you know- you Yeah, you're pretty nimble yourself. on your feet. Wow. <laughs> Fortunately, we have not moved down that far. It's been right. slow. So I've so, got to keep writing anti-racist songs and have to keep performing and to read a song until the you know that's that's what um um part of my legacy tell us limbo about the next mm. album what have you got planned oh i can't wait because the the ideas for the next record right is so amazing i think it's going to touch a lot of people because you know with us we always pull something out the bag you and do this week, yeah. unless we got something yeah. positive to say i possibly do right we don't make a record. We've got something to say and something to do. So we've we've gathered up all the information. It's going to be a hell of a record. Trust me. I mean, like like for instance, like like um, vote for me, right? You know, I really love that song because if we vote for you, do you promise to be upright, decent, and honest, and have our best interests at heart, Boris? Um, Donald Trump, you got our best interests at heart, you know. So if people listen, so tell me. Tell us, Limble, how has mm. lockdown been for you? Because I know you're a busy guy, you're a globetrotter, oh, you know, a top class musician, Look at a me, lifelong I'm rock gray. star. How's it been for you? It, it's been so rough on me. I'm grey and I'm gone all over. <laughs> I just want to pick up my guitar and I start playing my guitar again. And, I, and it's been so, because I was in Jamaica, which I love being in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, but when I come back from Jamaica and I, and I got here, I was meant to be in London and I couldn't travel. My God, I tell you, it's, it's like, really, I can understand those people, oh, depression just slowly creep up on you and you don't even realize yeah. it. You don't realize it. Mm. What's the matter with you? I don't know, but I don't want to do that. Mm. It just creeps up on you. And, and, and I think with this lockdown, right, I think we've got to show a lot. We've got to go and show love to these people who especially, um, there's lots of um, a, a single women and single men around, especially women. I've got lots of women friends, you know, they're all on their own, you know? And I mean, it's hard. Loneliness, it's very, yeah. very, 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 very difficult. And I think mm -hmm. the most important thing is to show those people love, you know? Not not walk past them because we tend to, um, uh, um, at times, yeah. a person's got an um, emotional problem, right? We just walk and, and do, you know, but I think just show them love. That is a great them. message. Yeah. So in terms of the, the lockdown, um, how often do you virtually meet up with your fellow band members? Um, do you do you have a, a group where you're encouraging each other, like uh, WhatsApp, or do you just Zoom each other? Um, every now and again, we we get some um, we get some and Zoom, and and Rihanna does know Terry. It's very difficult mm. because with 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 him with his condition, right? I mean, yeah. I'm I'm being, and, and, and I just seen a bubble, right? It's really hard on him. Because right. his condition is, I want to go out. As a matter of fact, it, 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 it sounds a little bit, you, you know, a bit of humor with, with this because it sounds a bit like, um, like Boris, go out, don't go out, get on the bus, but don't get on the bus. Mm -hmm. Sit on there, sir, but move over there. No, no, get back there. That's what it is like for a person who's got, who, like Terry, who's from bipolar, you know, it's not easy. Mm. It's yeah. not easy. And one thing I says, I got, so, he's, he's, I got so much love for him. Yeah. I and I'm there with him 24-7. Even I, I I ring him because he doesn't answer his phone. 
he don't speak. So I got to mm-hmm. ring and leave a message that says, Hi, Terry, it's me. How are you today? How are you today? And then he might drop me a, a, a few nights. I'm okay. Email and that's it. But that's a great point. Even if you know yes. somebody who doesn't pick up the phone, make yeah. the call anyway and show some love. Yes, we've got to do that. We've got to show some love. Yeah. I think I think that's what you know. That is what's needed. And um and uh, and uh, I mean it, to me it's, it's 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 amazing for the last nine years, ten years, right? I've been with Terry, so I've been with him twenty four seven. So I've learned and realized, oh my god, before. You know, you walk, you see somebody who's got a bit of a mental problem, right? You walk, you, you, you know, look at them, you just, you're, oh my God, you curse them off, you walk. You're like, oh, yeah, take it personally when they don't yeah. get back to you. Yeah. Yes. But, but um, you know, I I know him inside out and I, I just think he's a, a, an amazing guy, you know? Mm. Wonderful person. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still like, not trying to pick up for, 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 for Mr. Boris Johnson, but I do think he's getting the, the vaccine around. <laughs> A little bit more now, <laughs> and I think he's getting a little bit better at it. And and he's yeah. not telling so many lies now, because he realised, you know, um, he, he, he's getting a bit better. I think and you can't wait to have a beer down the pub with Boris when all yeah. this is over. Yeah, my good mate Boris, you know, I'm, I'm fine with him. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, Limble, thank you so much thank for you. bringing us You're welcome, joy, Rian. keeping us on the dance floor for forty years. We want to thanks, see you thanks, in the next 10 pleasure. years. And we are so looking forward to your yeah. next album. Oh, I can't wait, Rihanna. I'm, I'll be over in, in, um, in May. Let's hope this whole thing is over by May and Gersh and I can join you down the pub with yeah. Boris. How about Definitely, that? Definitely. Yeah. Mine is an yeah, orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> Make mine an orange juice too. Take care, yeah. Linval. Thanks care, for Linval. joining us. Take care, Gersh. <laughs> Rihanna, let's love to you guys. Respect to you. Love, love is the answer. Love to you yeah? too. Cheers, man. All the best. Bye, right? Thank God you. Bless. Bye, Bye, Bye. Bye guys. Whose new Linval dance moves came from him avoiding missiles? I <laughs> know, pretty crazy, wow. right? <laughs> What's your, by the way, what is your favourite special song? Um, Go Sound! Go Sound! <laughs> and finally, today, I put Gersh to the test to see if he's paying attention to what's in my makeup bag. I don't even know if I can do this, Gersh. No one will ever look at me the same after this. Here's the Gersh and Re Men in Your Life makeup challenge. So, Gersh, they say that you get what you pay for, and we haven't paid you anything extra to be my makeup artist for today. <laughs> I hope I don't regret it, Gersh. Nobody paid me extra to let you do my makeup, which nope. I think they should. Yeah. I will disclose that I've got a little bit of foundation on, so you're not working with a completely what? blank palette. But yeah. more or less, though. You've cheated me out of the experience of, of, of no. creating a masterpiece, a Rembrandt. <laughs> <sighs> well, come on, you've got the waistcoat, so you might as well get started. Yeah, right. He looks like an artist, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> right. So do I measure you like an artist with the thumb first? <laughs> Or is it, that's someone like a cross, isn't it? Not many bad today. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think I might need that, version, but thank you. Right, so let's get stuck in. One second, I can, I can feel an urge coming on. Oh, just, uh. oh God, like, ju- this is the first thing you've put on and he's bigging himself up already. No, so, go- that's, that's an involuntary action. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is the um, consequence of a massive ego. <laughs> I just want to clarify that you have never seen this makeup kit here before. Never. Never set eyes on it? Never set eyes on it, at all. Okay, and also, do you have any experience with putting on makeup? None at all. I've never done the thing. Right. Not, not even, even yourself on a Friday not night. Not even myself on a Friday <laughs> night. I have no clue. Doing well, okay. I hope I'm not putting too much on. Oh. You can't, you can never have too much makeup. You can, you can. It's a thing. I, I've been told that. No, so. I can confirm. <laughs> okay. Is there anyone you can think of that has too much makeup? Uh, okay, let me think. That's a that's an unfair question. Who's got too much makeup? Maybe, um, I don't know why Dolly Parton comes to mind. Maybe, do you think she has too much makeup on sometimes? Uh... I think maybe, yes, she does. It just came to mind. I feel like, a, you know, that Texan Belle kind of look that she yeah. has. I'm just trying to evenly colour your face okay. with, with all of this. 
that this brush is absorb uh, sponge is absorbing. Okay. So I'm, I'm hoping not, I'm not putting too much on. But like I said, the key word is hoping. A bit nervous. I, I have to go. <laughs> so you should be. <laughs> okay. And this is all to. It's an experiment, basically, to yeah. find out how much attention the men in our lives pay to us. Gersh and I are long time good friends and uh, we just wanted to find that out, you know. Are the men paying attention to the women in their lives, whether they're sisters or friends or wives or whatever? Just get the touch. Ah, oh, look at that. I was just about to say, go like this. But you did it already. <laughs> I shouldn't have helped you out, actually. I should have you just asked. No, no, it's all right. You see, the instinct kicking in because the artist, the flair. You, see. <laughs> look, you, I, you, you do look a bit French and artisty in that. that. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that, actually, because uh, don't you think that the, the tone is all even? Look at that. It's all. Okay, we're getting there. We're so get... far, so far. You've so... still got a long way to go. Come on. Like Forrest said, for no particular reason, I just kept going. You never know, you might end up giving me some new makeup tips. Yeah, you some see Stuff that. I'd never even thought of before yeah. and never want to think of again. I literally have no clue what I'm doing. I'm so nervous. <laughs> that makes two of us. This looks the business. Uh, the creme de la creme. <laughs> so, would you like to close your eyes, madam, on this one? <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Oops. <laughs> well, I, I hope I'm not putting too much on because I haven't been given the guide guideline. <laughs> so, I think I think I should have a look. Well, gosh. As the cameraman just said to me, you look good from far, but far from good. I'd <laughs> stick to my day job if I was you. I'll be joining Panto after this. Oh no you won't. Oh yes I will, it's the only job that will have me after everyone sees this mess. <laughs> we polled a hundred men and asked them how much attention they pay to the women in their lives in the Gershon Re viewers poll. Here's the result. 60% of men say they're scared to get involved when it comes to makeup, even though they'd like to know more. So it turns out that even though we women would like our men to pay more attention, it might be that we're subconsciously putting them off. Who knew? What do you think? Do the men in your life pay attention to you? Do you, they notice the little things? And guys, do you get a fair rap when it comes to paying attention to the women in your lives? Leave a comment on Twitter, Facebook and Insta. At Gershon Reed and let us know what you think. Well, that's it from us. Tomorrow on the show, we'll be asking... Are nutrients really nutritious? You never know what's in the packet, really. Yeah. And mask litter is the way we dispose of our masks becoming the new environmental problem. Yeah. And Phil the Chef will be sharing his top food prep tips with five quick and easy meals. Mmm. And we'll be hearing from our special celebrity guest in the studio, Marcus Rashford. That's all on tomorrow's show. And until then, remember, good friends, never say goodbye. They just say, see you soon. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs> I think that food prep thing would be great for you. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Busy man. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>